Thanks for tuning in once again to whatever I'm doing. It's great. Yeah, we like it. Um, I got a bunch of new subscribers. Thanks to my buddy Marty. Thanks for subscribing. I hope I make it worth your time. And I hope you make it worth my time. Join the discussion. Let's have some discussion and interacting and stuff. Uh, we're listening to this album that I can't fucking stop listening to. It's been in my car CD player for probably a week straight or so. But I've had this thing. This is Mutants, the Aeonic Majesty. I've had this thing for, I don't know, it came out in like 2000 or so. I've had this thing since it came out, basically. Uh, it's a black metal solo project of the guitar player Peter Lake, who was in Theory and Practice, who are active again, uh, much to my delight. They were, they put out their last album in like 2006 or something. Uh, and they were like one of my favorite bands for the, for the longest time. The, the first Theory and Practice album uh, third eye function is fucking essential. It's super technical, uh, which usually kind of like draws me out of death metal. I like it to be a little more like raw, headbangy, catchy, melodic, maybe sometimes. But this is really technical, but also somehow really memorable and really catchy. Um, it's an excellent album. It was recorded by Thomas Skogsberg, so you know the guitars sound amazing. Uh, it came out on Pulverized in like '99. But then after that album, he did this black metal side project on his own, and the riffs are just fucking so good. Uh, I just can't get enough of these monster riffs. But uh, I guess I, I call it black metal because the vocals are kind of high. It's really fast and nasty, but the riffs are just fucking monstrous, as you'll hear, hopefully, uh, among my rambling. So Mutants, the Aeonic Majesty. I highly recommend you pick this up if you haven't heard it. Uh, it's probably pretty cheap because nobody fucking talks about this band, but I've always loved this record and I love that like I've had it uh, when you have an album for you know 10 15 years and you're just kind of like yeah, that's good But then you put it in and you're like fuck. I forgot how good this is uh, And that is definitely what's going on here. I've been listening to this like crazy in my car I've been listening to the new death grips, which is really awesome uh, a non-metal thing I've been listening to the new, uh, well, the latest, as I said in my last video, uh, The Chasm. I've got that on order coming. Uh, I can't quite remember what else I have been listening to quite a bit. But um, I thought I would do some records like most of you guys do and like I'm trying to be different from you by not doing. But uh, I want to do a little bit of both. I want to do a couple of vinyls. And then we're going to continue on with the CDs where we left off in the A's uh, in the last video, number seven. So, uh, if you don't know, I also run an Instagram account where I highlight one record a day, a record or CD, whichever. Um, usually it's just whatever I plan on listening to or pick up. Uh, sometimes even if I don't have a chance to listen to it, I'll just pull one out and see, like, this album fucking rules. Just kind of like a daily walk through my collection uh, to give tribute to the albums that I think need attention or that are awesome. So uh, my Instagram account, if you want to follow that, is carrier underscore of underscore wounds. Carrier of wounds. That was a Ven Buen's End song title. Uh, so I'll put a link to that in my description here if you want to check that out. So uh, tomorrow's LP will be Quists for Kunsten Mavievig Weike. Uh, this is a Norwegian black metal band. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this. Um, for me, this came into my uh, repertoire and collection many years ago. I had this on CD. I had it, I probably picked it up in like 98 or so um, once I had listened to Immortal 186,382 times. Uh, and I always thought of, I, was, I still do think of Kvist as kind of like a auxiliary listen to Immortal. Um, it's really speedy, kind of frosty, Norwegian sounding, uh, but they only did this one record. Uh, and uh, I think it came out on Wounded Love back then on record, or on, v on vinyl. Uh, really limited, hard to come by. I wasn't going to pay that kind of price for it, but Peaceville uh, reissued it 
a year or so ago, and uh, I found it for a decent price. Thought I'd pick it up. Uh, totally worth it. This album is amazing. Uh, 90s black metal. They just don't do stuff like this anymore. Uh, if you've heard of anything that you think is up to this caliber, I'd like to know what you think. Um, this, uh, some of the members of this band went on to do Ergahal, which caught on pretty well. I never really saw what the big deal was with Ergahal. I kind of liked their first album for a minute, but uh, nothing just tops Kvist. Uh, and then today's record was Hypnosia's uh, Extreme Hatred. This record, so fucking good. This is up there with Sodom, Possessed, Creator, Destruction. I know that sounds crazy, but if you haven't heard this fucking thing, it's a thrash fucking nightmare. The riffs are so good, just razor sharp riffs. The vocals are so catchy and just fucking fist banging. Uh, so this is a gatefold. It's got a sweet picture in the middle of it. Uh, I love this album cover by Chris Verwimp. Uh, and then a band photo on the back. This is the original Hammerheart uh, version of it. Um, which it just, just got reissued last year, I think. So it shouldn't be that hard to pick up on vinyl. But like Kvist, I also have this on CD too. Uh, so if you're in the mood for something thrash, it's not really a good idea to block my face. Pick this up. This is so fucking good. Um, and then also, I think the LP version has a comatose? I think it has a uh, possessed cover on it. I want to say, yeah, I think it's comatose. Uh, but that fucking rules. Uh, and then yesterday, Rotten Sounds Murder Works. This uh, it's kind of like a death grind album. And I know a lot of guys are into this band because of their newer stuff. It seems like they haven't quite lost steam all that much with uh, most people. They've been doing a lot of tours. They come over from Maryland Death Fest every couple of years, it seems. Um, I've always loved this album the most. Uh, I think they have a different drummer on this album than on all the other ones. I want to say the guy from Winter Sun plays drums on this record. Anyway, the guitar tone on it is amazing. Uh, this is just like bouncing off the walls, death grind. And this is the Optemps autopsy stench version. Yeah. I'm gonna have to learn how to like properly move these records in front of the camera so I'm not like constantly blocking you out like a dipshit. I'm putting these away. Marty, you're so slick at putting these things away. You just slap them down and you're done. I don't have that kind of room in here. Next, I've got Catharsis, Rolled Without End. This, again, is a fucking monster of a black metal album. I'm not too happy with the art on this. I always thought this was kind of uh, not so hot of a looking record, especially given that um, the albums before and after this looked so fucking rad. Um, but this album, this is where it's at for me with this band. The fourth Reich album I did kind of like. It's a little less uh, one-dimensional than this record. But I thought this just fucking broke new ground as far as just absolutely mind-blowing, chaotic metal. Uh, God, it's just so vicious. This is the Black Edition. This came out on uh, Norma Evangelium Diaboli about 10 years ago or so. And I just always loved this album. It's killer. I wish they would put out a new album. I'm not sure why they haven't. So that does it for the vinyl that I picked out for today. Um, I wanted to touch on a couple of topics. Right now, uh, Falls of Raras is one of my favorite bands, and they are heading out on tour on the west coast of the United States. And they are heading out here in two weeks. So if you live on the west coast in a city that would probably have a show like this, they're doing about 10 or 15 shows, and I highly recommend you see Falls of Raros live. Uh, they're amazing. They're one of my favorite fucking bands. They're the greatest dudes. I hope they have a great tour. Uh, but you gotta check them out live. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. Their last record was phenomenal. And I talked to Ray, uh, their drummer, from uh, back in the Ostara Blot Festival back in March, and he said that they were entering the studio, recording a new record, and that it was really weird. 
So I don't know if they're done with that recording and they're heading out afterwards or if they're touring to warm up for the recording. Either way, I can't wait to hear the new record. And if you can see them live, check them out, definitely. They're touring, some of their dates are with a band called Numenorian, uh, which are pretty good. They're pretty much sound <laughs> just like uh, Falls of Aras. But they're also touring with Wayfarer, which is a band from Colorado, who are also pretty good. Totally in the same vein as they are. But uh, they're playing Denver, Salt Lake City, Jackson, Wyoming, Spokane, Calgary, Vancouver, Victoria, Seattle, Portland, Sacramento, Oakland, Los Angeles, San Diego, Tempe, Arizona, Santa Fe, and Colorado Springs. Uh, I'll put a link to their blog down in the description. So check that out. Now on to the CDs! Alright. So, first we have a band called Angel Kill. Just a brilliant fucking band name there. Uh, there's two reasons that I have this CD, actually. Like I said in the previous video, I collect Wild Rags, and this is on Wild Rags. Um, and another thing is that this band is actually from Iowa. And if you knew how rare it is that a band is from Iowa, a, like a metal band is from Iowa, um, you'd be curious about it. Uh, I pretty much check out every metal band that I can find from Iowa, uh, just to kind of have some pride in my state. But uh, this isn't very good. <laughs> but I have it. Um, a couple of their other albums, from what I remember I've checked out, are a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it's been a long time since I've listened to that one. Next, we have a band. I really like this band. I listen to them fairly regularly. I don't hear them talked about very much, but they're called Angmar. They are a French black metal band. Um, and if you know, those French black metal bands have totally incestuous members. So the guys in this band are in a ton of other bands. I want to say there's some link to Anthanath, but, uh, I was really impressed by the bass playing on this, uh, in this band. I can't remember which one of these I like more. Uh, yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that. But, uh, killer bass playing. It's just really well written, pretty technical speedy black metal um maybe a little bit like bellinos i guess if you will and if you don't know bellinos get on it bellinos has a new record coming out this year and i can't fucking wait for it uh, so next gosh oh this is antios yeah this is antios if you want to i don't know how to pronounce that really but god the fake artist is what this is called um this came out on More Hate Productions in, I don't know, 98 or so. But this is just a little four track EP, uh, just really speedy, fast black metal. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Mutant actually, come to think of it. I want to say there's a drum machine, it's just like balls to the wall, speedy stuff. Uh, it's kind of good, but yeah, I don't, I don't listen to it very often. Uh, next we have Antaeus, which is spelled pretty similarly to Antaios, however you want to spell that. Uh, this is Antaeus's Cut Your Flesh and Worship Satan. Uh, when this first came out, I listened to the shit out of this thing. So violent, so just pissed off, so ugly. Um, this is probably my favorite record by this band. Not to say that they didn't put out some other amazing albums afterwards. Uh, Blood Libels, really fucking good. Uh, the one after this, the title is in Latin, De Principali, something or other, was pretty good. Um, but both of these, I think, are my favorites. Uh, hence, that's why it's the only two that I have by them. But uh, Blood Libels is also just fucking vicious as hell. There's just something about the French. They just know how to make just sinister black metal that's so convincing and haunting but also like really musical and accomplished. So this is a weird fucking oddity. There was a guy on the Relapse Forum. Yeah, I'm a member of the Relapse Forum. Uh, it's a strange community. Anyway, this guy was selling a pile of CDs on there for like six bucks a piece. And it, when I see something like that, you know, I'll just check out the list and run through and see if there's anything that catches my eye. And I wound up getting like five or six CDs from this guy. A couple of them were pretty good deals. This one is Anton Maiden. Now, back in the early, probably in the year 2000, I would say, this guy got kind of internet famous. 
because he uses his computer. Now, this is like a, a 2000 computer. You know, it's probably a Dell or a, or a, I don't know, gateway computer. And he used his computer to make Iron Maiden covers. And I'm pretty sure it's just all MIDI uh, music. And then he just does like pretty under-inspired vocals over them. Uh, but it's just a really nerdy thing to listen to, and I thought it was worth picking up for a couple of bucks. It's really funny to have like the official CD release of this. Some some no name label put it out on CD. The CD the MB3s were going around like crazy back then, uh, but to have it on CD like the official release of it, I think is kind of funny. <clears throat> and uh, if I didn't have a CD of that, I probably would have forgotten that that ever took place. Uh, next, I have a band. Shit, I couldn't tell you anything about what these sound like. These are a couple of demos that came um, in a distro. So I've touched upon the subject a couple times, but I am, was uh, part of a label called Pagan Flames uh, for a number of years. And before Pagan Flames, we were called Black Metal DVDs. Um, but we used to get trades in and demos in from a lot of different places, different corners of the world. <laughs> Uh, and multiple copies of them. So I wound up with uh, some weird stuff that I wouldn't otherwise have picked up or known about uh, and I still have them. But So this is a demo from a band from Italy called Anwek. Through the fog, behind the trees. I imagine if you look at that photo you can pretty much guess what it sounds like but I couldn't tell you if you're right or wrong. So it must not have been all that exciting if, it, if I don't know what it's like now. <laughs> Another acquisition that we got back in the day from the label is On Wheel Postmortem Apocalypse. I remember thinking, and this this is pretty good, it's kind of like war metal, if you will. Um, I think this band is from like Oklahoma or something, and I thought it was weird that a that a US band was on Draw Car Productions, but uh, this for me really signaled an insurgence of United States metal being good again after after so long I think in the 90s we didn't really do so well um, I just remember thinking god damn if this is coming out of like the middle of the United States we, we're doing something right or wrong <laughs> so next I've got one of my favorite bands that well band it's not metal at all but it's Aphex Twin this is like uh, I don't really know much about this genre so I can't necessarily comment on it but uh, this stuff is so strange and original. Uh, I've been a fan for many years, ever since I first heard the EP Come to Daddy, particularly the song Bucephalus Bouncing Ball. Uh, this kid came over to my house. He was a friend of my roommates back in uh, like 97 or something. And he was like, turn that metal shit off. I got something to play for you. I'm like, whatever. He put it on and it's probably about one of five times in my life that's happened where it went well. Uh, and it blew my fucking mind. I went out the very next day to the record store and I bought this and I don't regret it since. He's done some other really weird albums. This is his self-titled album. Did I say this is Aphex Twin? I think I did. Um, so this is the self-titled album or the Richard D. James album, which is his name. Um, but yeah, it's like electronic, digital stuff, maybe drum and bass, if you will. This one is super fun. The video for this song is really fun. Um, it's got a song in here called Nanu that's really good to listen to when you're stoned. <sighs> um, this is the album I'm not so hot on. It's called Drugs. Um, it's okay. But actually, <clears throat> I listened to the shit out of these. I kind of wore out, I kind of wore them out, I would say. But the one I listen to frequently uh, these days is the Selected Ambient Works. And this is part two. I don't even know if anyone has the part one of that uh, but it's just excellent 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 ambient music it's nice to like put on if you say you're on a car ride with someone for a couple of hours and you want to be able to talk over music but have music playing uh, it's also nice if you just want to relax it's it's really good stuff so next I've got oh this is aphotic so I met the, a, a guy that was in this band uh, at Gilead Fest last year. This is Aphotic's Stillness Grows. This is a compilation of a couple of demos and then a full-length album that they did. <clears throat> I thought these guys showed a lot of promise, but they broke up like right after this came out. Uh, it's just really good doom 
Uh, I want to say one of these guys was also in a band called Dusk, which is an amazing, amazing United States doom band. Um, but this isn't really all that comparable to Dusk, I would say. It's kind of got its own flavor. It's pretty synth laden. Um, but yeah, it's really good. I put this on every once in a while. It's really excellent. Uh, <laughs> this is cool. This is a CD called Apotheosis. Or, uh farthest from the sun now I became interested in this band because I was looking through all the records that Samoth from Emperor had put out on his label Nocturnal Art Productions um, that label put out a, lot, a bunch of good stuff and I think the last time they put anything out was probably 2003 or so so I have probably had this for a good 10 years maybe or so but uh, this is like drum machine laden symphonic stuff I believe the band's from Italy and I think this is the only record that they did but uh it's super interesting super intricate orchestral uh black metal check that out if that sounds interesting to you uh there's some amazing riffs on there I should probably listen to that again since I'm listening to tons of amazing riffs on this thing now this CD is this is another one of my favorite bands uh, non-metal again this is Arcana so this is like a I don't know medieval chorus music if you will um, you just gotta hear it it's beautiful beautiful music and these two are by far my favorite albums this is the Dark Age of Reason and this is Inner Pale Sun both of these came out on Cold Meat Industry um, they're not all that rare, pretty easy to pick up. As you can see, I paid seven and eight bucks for them, but they're fucking phenomenal, beautiful records. Um, I'm always surprised. Uh, this band started after Crypt of Kerberos ended, and Crypt of Kerberos is this amazing symphonic death metal band from the early 90s in Sweden. Um, and so I went on from like doing this super symphonic death metal band to this, and it just it was like such a a turn on a dime to go from that style to this um, but they've got a lot of records out and honestly I haven't really probably heard one of their newer albums for a good 10 years or so but yeah I listen to these fairly regularly um, so one more CD and then I've got another topic to talk about at the end uh, about something really cool so this is a band apparently everybody fucking knows Arch Enemy and when they first came on the scene I had heard that Mike Emmett from Carcass was playing in a new band, so of course I was interested. And I didn't get around to hearing them until their second album came out. And I bought it, I've had it for a couple of years, but then I wound up listening to it and I was just like, you know what, this thing bores me. But I found this used a couple of years ago, and this is another Keith Smith uh, Jettison CD, of course. Uh, but I picked this up thinking there was a chance that it might be good since their second album was maybe kind of okay. But this is pretty fucking good. This is one is called Black Earth. And this is before they had the female singer. Um, I want to say Mike Amott actually sang on it. Or was it his brother? Um, either way, this is really good. It kind of reminds me of that Canaris Quintet album that I was talking about in the last video or two videos ago or so. Just super melodic, super chunky, speedy, headbanging my stuff. Uh, this has some covers on it. Ace is High, The Ides of March, Losing Faith. Not sure who Losing Faith is by, but this is pretty good. I'm glad I picked it up. So that's my stack of CDs, LPs. We talked about Falls of Raras. We talked about Mutant. Um, oh, so today I was checking out the Nuclear War Now Productions forum, and they had this thing, they had a, uh, what do you call it, a thread on there about this documentary from 1998. It's, uh, it was made in Belgium, and it was a black metal documentary where they go around uh, filming concert goers. Um, there's like Enthroned is in there, Ancient Wisdom is in there, Balsagoth is in there, Dark Funeral is in there. And those aren't necessarily bands that I'm way into, but for the time period, it's so cool to see, first of all, the interview, and I only watched a little 
portion of this, so I can't wait to watch the whole thing. But I watched probably 20 minutes of it or so, and it was really interesting. They interviewed some fans, and um, they had some really intelligent things to say. Um, so that was just like, it was so great to see someone talking about metal. And these kids, they, seem, they look like they're fucking teenagers. Uh, they're all dressed up in coarse paint and spikes and stuff. It was so funny. I haven't seen anybody dress up like that on a show for, for a long time. Um, but for me being so <laughs> stupidly nostalgic for the 90s and especially the late 90s black metal, I just, I eat that shit up in a heartbeat. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to the video. So it's a Belgian documentary about black metal. Let's see, um, I don't have it ready to find out what it's called. But uh, it's uh, subtitled in English, so if you want to watch it in English, you can do that. There's like French people and Belgian and a couple other languages being spoken, so it's amazing that someone went through uh, and transcribed all those languages into English. Uh, so check that out. It's a pretty cool delve into years gone by. And it's funny, sometimes you don't even quite realize how far things have come from those times until you go back and look at them so starkly and so candidly. Um, is there anything else? I thought there was another topic. I think I'm going to start leaving like notes for myself on what to cover and stuff. Well, I'm going to cut it off. Hope you guys are having a good one. Thanks for subscribing. Um, out.